All right, guys, so I just got home from Mike's working on the truck, putting the U-bolts uh, on and the tires on that one side. I did put new pants on, so I don't have a hole in my pants anymore, but this is waiting for me on the porch when I got home. It should be my chain and chainsaw bar. Let's go throw it on the saw, go out in the woods, and see if it makes a difference. So in case you forgot or haven't seen what we're talking about, Charlotte's doggo followed me out in the woods as usual, which is nice. I enjoy the company. The chain, I'm trying to show you on this one, was wanting to do this little walk and move, right? So you end up with this scallop cut and just wasn't cutting very well. So a lot of you suggested two things. Two things were suggested when I asked for some tips. One was flip the bar over and one was get a new bar and chain, which is what I did. So I do want, I want to try two things just for my own sanity and see the difference. I need to save this bar for a very specific reason. See that hole? And I will show you at the end of this video, but this bar goes on a very specific attachment I have for the tractor. So I have to save this bar. So I'm really hoping, I mean, I don't have to, I could just drill a hole in another one, but you know, drilling through hardened steel isn't the easiest thing in the world. So it'd be great if I could reuse it. So I do want to flip this over and see if it makes a difference. Step one, I'm going to try and make another cut just like that with the tripod on that side so you can kind of see how it travels. And then we'll flip the bar and then we'll put the new bar and chain on, okay? pretty sure you can see exactly what that's doing so that's the way that the bar is now let me uh let's flip it over and then we'll slide on down about that so that's what the bar flipped it still wants to go just a little bit which tells me that's probably in the way the chains sharpened but it definitely i mean i didn't really do anything different to cut and i didn't do anything it's definitely a little bit straighter so i believed everybody that said it i just kind of wanted to see it for myself the good news is the attachment i use with this on the tractor only cuts things that are like you know that big so I think I can save that bar and that should work just fine for that attachment. Now, let's see what we ended up with here. Alrighty, so this showed up today. Let's see what we got. The package is open a little bit, but I suppose that's okay. Hopefully everything's in there it's supposed to be. We ended up with this. Oh, look at that. Okay. So that already caught me off guard because one of the reasons I was going to say I went with this is that it was one of the cheaper ones I could find that was made in the USA. And then, of course, the first thing you see when you open the package is made in China. So, yeehaw. I'm supposing their website says made in USA because their corporations in Georgia? Maybe. But that's already got me frustrated right off the bat. Either way, let's throw it on the saw and see, uh, let's see how it performs. Who knows? Maybe it'll be good enough for a homeowner. That's what I am. All right, just a couple things real quick. I noticed it just kind of jumps out. That's screen printed on, still stamped on. The Husqvarna bar, that's stamped on, so when the paint wears off, you still know what you're going to get. But in the day of the internet, it doesn't really matter. I can always look that up. It is a laminated bar, but that's not a big deal for a homeowner, I don't think. And look, the Husqvarna was laminated too. So like I said, I'm not trying to keep up with logger weight. I'm not trying to mill lumber. I'm just cutting stuff, some of this stuff. And burning it that's it i think for a homeowner bar and chain it'll be fine we'll find out in the long run you guys will know because you'll be tagging along i'll run through that log a couple times to so you can kind of see what it does and then of all things we're actually going to take that bar off put the old bar on and then we're going to put a bracket on the 755 we'll run that up to the barn i have a fun little attachment i made 
it's a little gimmicky. It was a little, I wonder if I can make this kind of thing, but it does come in handy for a few specific tasks. And I have one of those tasks coming up this week. So later this week, you'll see me using the attachment, but for this video, I'll put it on the tractor so I can kind of talk about it a little bit. So let's run that through the log. It's down there. Jeez, I just kind of walked away and started talking. I gotta get back down here. We'll make a few cuts on that so you can see how it does. I don't expect anything crazy. It just came out of the package, but let's see what happens. <laughs> all right so ran out of gas that's fine just get some gas out of the gas can well my gas can i keep in the woods is also out of gas so we'll just get the 755 up to the barn i'm just gonna throw all this stuff in the bucket i got gas up there 755 started she never lets me down so we'll head up there and see if we can do something there all right the good news is we made it to the barn the bad news is yeah, that's a pretty daggone low tired, dang near flat. So I'm, I'm not even messing with putting it inside. I'm just parking it on the porch tonight. Listen, I'm out of gas. I'm low on air. I don't have electricity at the barn to put air in it. So that means I got to go back to the house, get a portable tank and put air in it. And what I'm really running low on is motivation. It's just a cold, nasty day and I just can't find it. So let's just fast forward to the next day when uh, I feel a little better. All right. All right. All right, guys, while I'm out looking for my motivation, let's take care of some unfinished business real quick. The top three names that I picked are gonna be on the screen here for you. What I need you to do is pick one of those names, put the name or the number associated with the name in the comment, we're gonna vote on it. And the one with the most votes is what's going on the side of the bush hog with the decal. I can't thank you guys enough. You guys brought your absolute A games with the naming process. So I can't wait to see how this vote turns out. If you haven't seen the video on the bush hog mod, check it out here. All right, so I got gas, uh, I got gas for the chainsaw. I got coffee, I got motivation, I got sunshine, I got everything I need to get going today. Finish up this video, finish up this project. I got this pile of wood right here. Let's run that saw through that real quick so I can see that new bar go. And then we'll get to the special bracket on the 755. <laughs> bar it's 18 inch bar 35 bucks shipped shipped to your door 35 bucks it did fine but that's what we expect out of a brand new bar the first two cuts there shouldn't be any problems so the real test will be what it does over time you guys will be along for that journey we'll figure it out let's get the bracket on the 755 the bracket I've built that's what I was talking about I need to save that old bar you can see I got that hole it goes right through there spring mounts it rides on here so essentially we got a throttle control cable runs back to here a magnetic mount on a beautiful and I mean beautiful JB welded masterpiece all the way back to this which controls the throttle on that end all right which I keep up here with me. So essentially, this is for trimming tree limbs, all right? Now listen, hold on, let me switch to a different view. All right, so yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. To be honest, it was kind of like a, um, I wonder if I could make that kind of thing, so I made it. It works okay, it's not bad. Yeah, I could use a gas-powered pole saw, but uh, pole saws don't have cup holders, so that's kind of a nice feature. And I really don't use this but like two times a year. I drive around the edge of the field in the spring to uh, trim any trees, the limbs that have kind of grown in, so I'm not getting waxed in the face when I'm bush hogging around the edge. And I drive down worth about, I don't know, it's probably two miles worth of trails, maybe. Maybe not that much, but drive down trails and kind of trim tree limbs as we go. So I could use a pole saw and pack a pole saw around the edge of the field and around the trails if I wanted to, but you know what? This works handy. Nah, it doesn't get very high, but it does the job I built it to do. I don't know. 
Okay, so let me show you a couple things. There's a pole. I know a lot of people say, yeah, you're gonna put a lot of pressure on your bar, but I've got these springs and I got a fish scale. I was kind of curious myself how much uh, actual pounds of pull you get on this thing. So I want to, let me try this real quick. All right, so you got these springs here to try to keep some pressure so you don't put the pressure of the hydraulics onto the pressure of the bar. So the springs are for give. So I got this little fish scale hooked into the bar. Oops, wrong side of the scale. And if we pick up on this, I don't have a keeper in the top, but if we pick up on this, about 25 pounds. So you put about 25 pounds of force on that bar because the springs give a little bit. So I don't know. I don't think that's too crazy excessive. As far as getting pinched in the little tree limbs, because of the spring setup, it's allowed to kind of ride back and forth on that piece of angle there. It's all got a little bit of give. And then we've got these plates. It's kind of like a soft plastic back there for where the handle bolts on. I don't know, it works okay. Uh, and if you take the keeper out of this bar here, you can let it down. You can still put all your oil and gas and stuff in. And then you just sit that right back up in there with your keeper and you're good to go for more so i just i just don't have the time to use this thing today i'm already running late i'm already gonna be in trouble so uh what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna park it in the barn and then later this week we'll get this thing out i'll show you guys exactly how it works so you can get some good footage of it with the magnetic mount on the bucket and see how it flexes and see how it works fairly well for that and then um the next couple videos just full disclosure, I got a leaky head gasket on the Subaru Outback, so the next couple videos are gonna be fixing that head gasket. That's what's coming up. I'll try to get a barge shot later if a barge goes by the house today, but if not, we're just gonna end it here. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll catch you on the next one.